Hello, welcome. I am Stephanie with Design My Space. If you're new here, my husband and I have a show called Busted Cribs where we renovate houses and make them new again. And um, I do the design and he's the contractor. And in the process, we've had so many people write in or message me asking me, what would you do with my space? And so we had so many um, of these requests that I decided to do my own segment where I design your spaces. So I'm gonna jump right in. This is Holly's kitchen. She likes a modern farmhouse, but a lot of clean lines and wants it to feel open and airy. So her space is not that right now. It's a little bit dark, it's a little bit dated. Uh, so let's jump right in. So right here, it looks like there is a living room, a dining room, and the kitchen is on the right. Okay, so she has an island in the middle, and then she has what we call an L shape. It's a really great functional space. I see it being um, a really good space. I just think it needs to be updated. So she has a hallway right here with the fridge. Okay, this gives me a really good idea. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff on your countertops, um, but my countertops are the same way, but I created some systems that help me kind of organize these um, dumping grounds is what I kind of call them. And it helps it visually look more um, just clean and airy. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the Pinterest. I, I got some boards together. I'm also gonna link it below, so make sure you check that out. I wanted to create an open space, right? So I think you need to paint the cabinets. I, I don't know how far you wanna go. Uh, I would personally, if you have the budget, replace the cabinets with a, um, a traditional shaker or um, just something white and clean. I think that'll help you um, update the space pretty minimally. Uh, another thing that I've done in the past with those, because it looks like you have the arched, yeah, you have the arched panel fronts. Something you can do is if the drawers are all functional and everything's really working for you and you don't really wanna spend the budget on cabinetry, um, which is very, I get it. Um, you can change out the doors you can paint the doors and leave the arch, or you can wrap them. There's like this really durable film that they put on it. So you can do that as well if you wanted, if you liked the way your cabinets look. Uh, there's also the option of taking like a really thin melamine or MDF board and um, covering the front, similar to this one. So this is the same style as yours. It's a, a really thin board. You wanna make sure that you glue it really well. So use the strongest construction adhesive you can use. And so another thing I wanted to address is above the cabinetry. Your cabinetry has this, it looks like 18 inches above. If you are replacing your cabinetry, go with your 42 inch cabinets and then some crown molding and that'll kind of span the distance. You can also take these cabinets off, move them up and put a shelf underneath your cabinetry. But I'm short, I don't like that. And I know that you're a little bit short too. <laughs> so I think the best option is to create a really tall crown molding. This is the most affordable option, is to create a crown molding above it where you build out basically a flat box um, similar to this and you put trim on the bottom in between the cabinet and this new built-in, and then you put some crown molding at the top. This is a really simple way to update it. So this is kind of the process here. So here, kind of what you have, they have like 15 inches, you have like 18. Um, you build out some, with some two by fours above it, and then you put a, um, that MDF board, the same thing, and then they put some crown molding on it. These people did a B board up, up the top. That's really cool looking and it looks really custom. So that's updating the cabinets. If you're able to change out your flooring, I would also do that. I see that it's a kind of like a creamy beige. Um, you can lay LVP, which is luxury vinyl planking over top of it. Tile is really easy to lay over top of and you just run it right into your cabinetry and then you'll do a quarter round around your cabinetry to finish it out around the edging. Um, and this would be really easy to lay over here if you have the budget, because I see that it goes into multiple rooms. So that's a big, that's a big expense. But if you have the budget for it, I would suggest doing that. If you don't, you can easily paint these tiles. I've seen a lot of DIYers do it and it holds up for a very long time if you buy the right paint, if you prep it properly. Um, if you don't wanna go through that also, you can just update your grout because the grout can sometimes get dingy and, and honestly, like when you update the grout, it is like night and day. So these are similar to yours. They're a little lighter than yours, but before they had like a darker grout, the, the one on the bottom is a white grout. So if you just even just did white grout, it'll tie in all your whites and creams and all of these 
things that are gonna compete and kind of make it feel dingy in your space and it'll brighten everything up and make it feel new again and for minimal cost. Uh, here's another before and after of what it looks like. I mean, it is just, it is just a night and day situation. Something else with the flooring, if you do the LVP, I would go with a flooring that has some gray tones, but mostly some richer, warmer tones because your dining room table is that rich mahogany red color. I would take a tie, like a luxury vinyl that has that red tone in it like this one, but a, a way lighter color. I think this is a really cool idea on the space facing what looks like your living room. On the corner there, it'd be kind of neat to have these these little pockets and it's th there's a DIY of how to do it, but it kind of has, um, you can put, you know, magazines, cookbooks. It just adds that extra storage, but it also adds that really fun decoration that makes your home feel kind of custom and cool. The dining room space over here, I love that it seats so many people. I don't know that you need to do that or, or just all the time, right? So one suggestion I have is create a banquette seating by the window. I don't know how far your windows go down, but I would do a bench right underneath with a little backing and, and you can hang the backing on, but you have this little pillow that you can hook on these little hooks and you have a backrest and you can take that down when you're not using it, when people aren't sitting in it. But just creating this type of feeling, I think will, it will not only modernize the space, but it'll also feel very comfortable and inviting and just really cute uh, to when you, cause you're gonna see that right when you walk in your front door, it looks like, it looks like, yeah, it looks like you come from this main space and, and you see this kitchen. But yes, banquette seating, change out those curtains. The curtains on the outside at one time are really cool and very trendy, but now it's dating the space and it's making it feel very heavy and, and kind of like weighing it down. You wanna go light and bright and go as tall as you can. My last suggestion is the counter space. I see, that there's a lot on the counters. It's really hard to cook if you don't have a lot of prep space. So what I wanna do is take all of that and not like get rid of it, but maximize your space. So one way to do that, what I had to do at my personal house is create zones. If you find a tray, that's the best way to do it is get a tray. It could be low, it could be an actual tray and group things in threes, fours, fives, like group it together. So you wanna create these zones. I personally now have a lot of counter space, or I have a lot of cabinet space, so I hide things away. But for things I wanna use every day, I put them in a new, a new jar, you know, even, even things that shouldn't be in a jar, I take the, I take the packaging, I roll it up, and I, I roll it and put it into a jar just so I don't have to see it. And I know what's in it. You can put a label, you can do whatever you want just to organize your space. Um, but see, there's a nice little cluster. All right, so I know this is not like a super professionally done, I did it very quickly, <laughs> but it kind of will give you an idea of what it looks like. On this photo, for instance, I painted it all white instead of doing the chair rail. I put those huge curtains on the side, keep the arch, I think it's great. Arches are so in right now. This kind of gives you an idea of what the space would look like. You can either keep your backsplash or you can tile it up. They have these really cool stick-on subway tiles that actually look pretty good and you can put that right over your tile. I have all of your pinned items on Pinterest and I am gonna go through and do a Wayfair um, kind of shopping list for you for all the little organizational things and stuff like that and I'll link that below as well. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Holly, I hope that this helps you out. Let me know down below like what you liked, what you didn't like, if there were things that you think that were I could have done better or that Holly could use in, in this space. Um, I would love to hear that. This is a community of people that um, are creative and talented. I, I'm just sharing it with you and I would love for you to share it with us. So comment below, like and subscribe to my YouTube page as well as my Instagram page and make sure you send in your spaces because I need spaces to design. Go to bustedcribs.com and go to design my space in the little tab on the top and fill out the form. Send about three to four photos and give me an idea of what kind of style you like, what colors and what your needs are. I want to design these for you guys. It's so fun. I've been having a really good time getting in your photos and just hearing from all of you and I want to keep going. So send them in and I'll see you next time on Design My Space with Stephanie. Bye.